Hi, and welcome to the Digital Digging YouTube channel. In this video, we're taking a look at the Junkers Ju87 Stuka, both in history and in the game of War Thunder. The Ju87, or Stuka as it was more commonly known, was amongst a handful of aircraft designs that were so distinctive that even civilians could readily recognise it even if they couldn't put a name to it. The Westland Lysander was one of these designs and for superficially similar reasons. Like the Stuka, it sported fixed spatted undercarriage, but the Stuka had a true gull wing rather than the reverse tapering wing of the Lysander, which merely gave that impression. If you're wondering why I'm going on about the Westland Lysander so much, it's because I'd dearly love to see it in the game and didn't wish to miss an opportunity to bring it to someone's attention. However, moving along, and indeed, back to the point. The Stuka dive bomber was principally designed by Hermann Pohlmann, who began development of the aircraft as early as 1933. Pohlmann was not only a major driving force behind the creation of the dive bomber, but also a major proponent of the idea that it should be designed to be as simple and strong as possible. To begin with, the aircraft was powered by the Rolls-Royce Kestrel engine, 10 of which were purchased by Junkers for the grand price of £20,514, 2 shillings and sixpence. The prototype for the Ju87 was then constructed in Sweden in secrecy before being smuggled into Germany in late 1934. Things didn't go well for this prototype, however, as the square twin fins and rudders proved too weak in dive testing, ultimately breaking off and causing the aircraft to crash. The offending fins and rudders were redesigned for the second prototype and a slightly less powerful Junkers Umo 210A replaced the Rolls-Royce Kestrel. By 1936, further revisions had taken place and the third prototype was pitched against the Arado AR-81, the Blom and Voss HA-137 and the Heinkel HE-118. Both Junkers and Heinkel beat the competition, and orders for a small amount of each aircraft were placed. Initially, three of the Ju-87s were field tested by the Condor Legion in Spain, and a rapid series of improvements took place over the course of the conflict, including the addition of a bomb cradle which swung the bomb clear of the aircraft's fuselage, and the inclusion of the UMO 211DA which generated 1,200 horsepower, better than double the power of the 210A. This version was armed with a pair of wing-mounted 7.92 M17 machine guns and a rear-facing 7.92 MG15 operated by the rear gunner. Designated the Ju87B1, this was the first model to go into full production and by the outbreak of World War II the Luftwaffe had 336 of them available for deployment. During the course of correcting mechanical considerations, the most vulnerable part of the aircraft, the pilot, had also to be taken into account. While the Condor Legion were fighting alongside the fascists in the Spanish Civil War, it was discovered that retaining a useful level of consciousness during the pull-up at the bottom of a dive could be a problem. In one instance, a whole formation of Stukas dove during misty conditions and found themselves having to pull up late, too late for a fair number of them who ploughed right into the ground. To counter the consciousness problem, Junkers introduced an automatic air brake system which would ensure that the aircraft would pull up regardless of whether the pilot was awake or not. Though frighteningly effective to begin with in Poland, France, the Med and parts of the Russian front, encounters with enemy fighters during the Battle of Britain proved so disastrous that the Stuka was quickly withdrawn to fields of operation where the enemy were unlikely to have air superiority and used to attack shipping and ground troops where it employed its Trumpets of Jericho, a psychological weapon consisting of a pair of propeller-driven sirens to full and terrifying effect. These were withdrawn from use once the enemy had grown used to them, as it introduced a drag factor of up to 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. The Ju-87 was produced almost right to the end of the war and was adapted to a number of different roles including the Ju-87G1, a version with twin 37mm cannons for tank busting, and a variation of the 87D3 which carried pods on the undercarriage which could carry a couple of men. When they were over the desired spot, the Stuka would dive and then jettison the pods, which would float to the ground on parachutes. This was never tested in the field, however, probably to the great relief of all of those who would have been involved in a practical demonstration. I'll tell you a good aircraft for dropping agents behind enemy lines, though. The Westland Lysander. When the British managed to get their hands on one, it fell to Eric Winkle Brown to fly, and he said of it, I had flown a lot of dive bombers and it's the only one that you can dive truly vertically. Sometimes with dive bombers, maximum dive is usually in the order of 60 degrees. When flying the Stuka, because it's all automatic, you really are flying vertically. The Stuka was in a class of its own. 
In all, somewhat over 5,700 JU-87s of all types were built and, as I said, it remained in construction almost throughout the entire war, though it has been noted that this was possibly not so much out of respect for its more effective characteristics, but as one author put it, there was no suitable replacement forthcoming. In the game we have a number of JU-87s, but for the purposes of this video I'll be talking about the first available in the German tech tree, the JU-87B2. In arcade mode, this is a tier 1 aircraft with a battle rating of 1.7. It's armed with a single 7.92 MG-17 machine gun on each wing, supplied with a thousand rounds of ammunition and a reload time of 15 seconds. It also has a rear-facing 7.92 MG-15 machine gun, mounted in the canopy and operated by the rear gunner, and that has a further supply of 900 rounds. It can carry up to four 110-pound or 50-kilo bombs under the wings and a single 550-pound or 250-kilo bomb slung under the belly. It has a maximum speed of 253 miles per hour or 407 kilometers per hour and a turn time of 25.8 seconds. In realistic mode, this changes to 238 miles an hour or 383 kilometers per hour and a turn time of 27.0 seconds. In addition to the standard camouflage of the base model, there are a number of skins you can unlock through combat or buy if you have any spare golden eagles knocking around the place. The B-2 is a competent dive bomber at this tier, and its bomb load, while not exactly overwhelming, is at least not exactly piffling either. The Jericho Trumpet kicks in at about 240 miles per hour in arcade, and while the rear gunner isn't the most lethal of chaps, it's handy to know when someone's on your tail, and on those long, realistic climbs, a bit of company is always a comfort. Like its real-life counterpart, the JU-87 in the game can be fairly successfully mauled by any semi-competent fighter pilot, so it's best to get in as fast as you can, dispense with your bombs, and then get out while you can. There are exceptions to this rule, however, and if you pursue the line up to the JU-87 D5, you can unlock a pair of twin 20mm gun pods in addition to your wing-mounted 20mm cannon. Admittedly, this does nothing for your speed or manoeuvrability, but anything foolish enough to get in front of that array won't be bothering you for long. Okay, that's it for another video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll hopefully see you for the next one. Cheerio, chaps and chapesses, take care, and bye-bye.